Now we're going to talk about Tonglot Hewlett. So now you're talking about a South African listed business that is involved in the agricultural sector in a couple of different ways though. It's one of the mid cap stocks in this environment. But the business divisions are first of all sugar, which is plantations in KwaZulu-Natal, other parts of Sub-Saharan Africa, but most especially Mozambique and Zimbabwe. So Joseph can tell us about that. Starch, so that is a business which they manufacture glucose and starch which has as its major customer S.A.B. Miller. So you'll see if you look at a bottle of beer in this country, it also mentions maize as being one of the inputs there. And then the other leg of the business is property development because they own all of this cultural land around Greater Durban, which over the years has been developed into industrial and residential estates in the Umschlange area and beyond. All those golf courses like Zimbali, Mount Edgecombe and the likes. And that activity brings in big bucks every you know now and then well not every now and then but it goes in a cycle if you know what i mean market capitalization just shy of 15 billion rand so we're not talking about dollars anymore we've now switched currencies to rands a bit smaller price to earnings ratio 16.2 dividend yield 2.09 percent but the most recent results battling with the sugar, which is what we were talking about earlier with the conditions being what they were. I mean, if you go to Triangle Valley in, in Zimbabwe, I mean, they've got vast land there, but also with the indigenization and issues of land uh, claim and uh, resettlement, certainly from a property perspective, they might want to start offloading some of them if there's mm. a huge risk there. Um, so they need to water quite a lot there. So I think one of the key issues they might have to do in Zimbabwe is to try and see if they can get water from um, Zambezi River. Because let's just back up the truck. So traditionally, Tongot was in the KwaZulu-Natal area, right? And yes. then in the last sort of decade or so, they had two major expansions. One was to Mozambique, to the yes. Genevan yes. province, where yes. I don't know, I think, uh, does it rain there all the time? I think so. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and Zimbabwe. Yes. And they went into Zimbabwe, into that area, to the eastern side of Zimbabwe, oh, Zimbabwe which was right. really something that they have done recently enough. They know how the politics of Zimbabwe work. So they had an arrangement with various growers, and they must have had various political things sorted out. Yes. And what has happened? I mean, has it been a success for them? Is it something that they have scaled well? What is the relationship with the Zimbabwean government? Well, they haven't, I, I don't think they've put in a, a massive money into it. And I think okay. obviously also one of the issues, apart from the uncertainty in terms of indigenization and so on, is really the drought we've been talking about. Yeah. That, so you know, do they have um, uh, enough of that? Um, so, so if you look in terms of market cap you're comparing, this is just, just under a billion or a the exchange rate of 14, just 1 billion US mm. dollars yeah. market cap. The dividend yield does not look uh, bad, but I think in the short term, they're certainly facing a little bit of some, some few challenges. Mm. Um, uh, as, as we yeah. saw, so in this recent set of results, earnings down 30 to 40%, dividend down 30 to 40%. But they do point to the fact that they feel that good times lie ahead because first of all, the weather can't be worse. And secondly, because of tariff protections yes. on sugar output, both in South Africa as well as in Zimbabwe. Yes. So I don't know. I mean, I can see that that could be a short term positive, but I always worry that import tariffs create sort of artificial benefits that maybe, you know, could get taken away at a later stage. They've got good, they've got good byproducts, and I, I think they could basically use that. I, mm. And I know that you know our minister of health here was talking about you know, that sugar is not good for us and so on. But as yeah, you put it, that too. These, these, <laughs> these things are used uh, by SAB Miller and yeah. in other products, your yeah. glucose and so yeah. on. Yeah. Um, so they do have scope. Uh, all they need to do really is to obviously to try and increase uh, the sales in those byproducts. Mm. Um, and they should come out. I mean, there's about uh, 19, 20 percent of the PI 12, uh, 52 or uh, one year highs. So, so it might start offering a little bit of opportunities, but I think towards August we'll be mm. able to start getting better predictions of what the rainfall patterns will be. Which is going to be key for next year's earnings because you know that's how it they all have comes to down. Eat, yeah. Uh, share chart graph there looks a bit um, indifferent. That's not all that impressive and you can see it's been hard work for the last year and a bit and I guess that follows the sugar price travails. Let's talk a bit about the land development side of things though because you know they've got these agricultural lands which they then get ministerial approval to convert from agricultural land to residential or, or industrial land. Yep. And then they do a big substantial uh, activity going on there. And that looks good. I mean, Cornubia, that whole Umschlange area seems to have expanded well. I think the average selling prices are like a million rand a hectare or yes. something. 
I mean, that has to be quite carefully managed, but it seems to me that that's going to be a good underpin for Tongot in the years to come, because, I mean, that's big money. It, it is huge money, and those um, estates and developments are springing up everywhere, I, mm. I think, inside. Again, I think if mm -hmm. you look in terms of whether it's Mozambique and Zimbabwe, they're really taking uh, that model of proper development into mixed use, you know, mm -hmm. uh, estate and so on. But also as towns get um, uh, kind of uh, congested and people want to go and have better um, uh, lifestyles uh, out yeah. of the outskirts, uh, they will certainly mm -hmm. be able to rip off some, some mm -hmm. cash. Mm -hmm. The question is how, what are they going to use that money for? So they have to um, invest properly to make sure that, uh, you know, they complement um, uh, their key activity that is of farming mm -hmm. uh, to make sure that, mm -hmm. you know, the earnings come through. But it seems like what you're implying is it's been tough for them and really one can't say with great confidence until you've seen a little bit later in the year. So you're going to lean towards We've not hot. We have yeah, to wait until December. Too.